Welcome to the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series presented by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. The key to getting the most out of the seminar series is to listen to the small things, the subtle adjustments our faculty teams adhere to when the fishing might be tough or they're trying to target trophy game fish. That's what we call the gold nuggets of the seminar series. So come with me, let's get right to it and join, in progress, the Saltwater Sports and the National Seminar Series. Coming to you from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, it's the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Now, here's George Poveromo. Welcome to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Today's topic is bottom fishing, and we have a heavyweight panel of bottom fishing experts that I'm proud to introduce. The gentleman to my uh, left over here, fellow Mako owner, out of Key West, started his early career commercial fishing for bottom fish, and trust me, he definitely knows his stuff. Also a television host, and would you like to plug your television series? Pescando en los Cayos. That's See? why I had him do it, because I can't pronounce that. <laughs> you can never Diego Toyram, my good friend right over here. <laughs> Next to him, the one, the only, Harry Vernon III, and at the end, my longtime friend, out of Key West, Captain Mark Schmidt. And I could tell you between these three individuals alone, they account for, or have accounted for a ton of bottom fish on this. Now let's try to, I know we're South Florida based here, but let's try to use the practicalities of bottom fishing and pass along some tips to how they could apply wherever bottom fish are basically found. The first thing is you need to know the structure and identify the structure where these fish are gonna be. This is where the electronics in the modern day electronics are totally essential. Mark, you've made your living for decades out of Key West. Talk about the importance of using a good sonar, but really get into what exactly are you looking for in a sonar, and what does that tell you as far as where to position yourself to start bottom fishing? Well, if you go, let's just say you go up and run up in the Gulf, and the Gulf is gonna be muddy, flat, sand bottom, eelgrass bottom, and then we have what they have a live bottom, which is sea fans and you know, the, the bottom is the, the sand has been brushed away. And then most of the fish that are either going to be swimming around on top or the grouper is going to be down in the bottom. So with the split screen that we have with the Simrad, you can look and get a very detailed bottom feature to see you know, that, that hard return and see the fish that are swimming around above it. And so structure, structure, structure. Some of the structure, some of that bottom is going to be the rubbly live bottom. Some of it's going to be a, a 15 foot spike where it's a huge rock pile. And on the reef, you know, you're going to have your coral and you're, you're basically looking for depths. And you, if you get too deep off of that coral, you're going to get onto the sandy bottom, which sometimes the mutton snappers will live in that area. But that recorder is going to tell you where you are and, and what return and where the fish are in relationship to the bottom or what, where in the water column are those fish holding. Exactly right. Then you look at the Simrad and you look at the Chirp Enhanced Transducers, which the Chirp gives you three bottom readings or sonar distributions versus a single one with traditional sonar. So you're getting so much more target separation and clarity. And then you start playing with the zoom features that you could really analyze a structure. And like you said, figure out what type of fish are holding where, which would help you in either making a drift to target certain species that might be up near the top or anchor to try to take advantage of what's down below. Dago, again, you made your living commercial fishing for groupers, yellowtails and muttons. Tell me about the importance of whether you want to anchor versus drifting. When does one come into play versus another in terms of bottom fishing? Well, you know, if, if you're looking for a grouper, um, you want to anchor. You want to you find that structure, like Mark was saying, and anchor up. You know, unless you're nowadays with the slow pitch jigging, you can go over the top of these, um, of the structure and jig and, and um, just pretty much um, let the current take you. Mm -hmm. But basically for grouper, you want to anchor, anchor in that structural area. Um, nowadays with these um, um, sonars like the Simrad, like if you're going over a specific spot, like in the winter, you're patch reef fishing, you could find those patch reefs. Sometimes these patch reefs are small areas and you could hover over the top of these patch reefs and pretty much if you want to go for the grouper, stay right on top. If you want to go around the edges for the mutton snapper, anchor off the side for, for in a sandy area. So nowadays with the, with the technology we got, we could specifically get on certain areas and, and kind of fine tune everything. 
Very, very good on that too. And you mentioned something very important. You talked about flutter jigging. You know, traditionally you're anchoring for your groupers, but when you first come to a record bottom spot, it might be productive just to make a couple of drifts, work a flutter jig down to see what you might pop off of that. And give me the subtleties involved in working a flutter jig when you're bottom fishing. What pound test, what type of leader, and how will those subtleties be when you're working that? Well, you want to use at least a 50 pound test leader. And like a mono floral, does that make yeah, a difference? Yeah, well, for grouper, not necessarily. These fish will hit, they're very, very aggressive. You don't need, you don't need floral for grouper necessarily. I like to use it, 50 pound test. Mm -hmm. You know, 50, 60 pound test, nothing smaller than that. Um, and you work it slow. Nowadays with the slow pitch jigs, you could work the bottom. And when you hit these spots initially, it's a great idea to flutter across the top before you anchor up, because these fish are gonna come right at, at you, especially in the area of Tampa. I recently fished in Tampa for those gags, mm -hmm. and it's a great bottom to do this in, the slow pitch jigging. Very good, and just containing it to the, to, 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 to the bottom yeah. on that jig. Yeah, you want to stay five, six, you know, they'll come up. They'll, you'll, they'll hit up, you know, 10 feet up in the, in the, in the water, sir, in the water um, um, but they'll, they'll come up to a certain, and then they'll go back down. So you, want, you don't want to work like a high-speed jig where you work it all the way to the top for blackfin tuna. You want to work it, seven, 10 feet and drop it again and slow pitch, slow pitch. Yep. And these groupers will come right after it. Gotcha. It works. And, and Harry, let's talk too about uh, fishing your deeper wrecks versus you, the shallow wrecks. Shallow wrecks, more times not we're gonna anchor, but then sometimes you start getting these deeper wrecks out there. We tend to either try to hover over the top or maybe try to make drifts over them, especially if the current's not all that bad. And I wanna talk to you about getting specific types of leaders that could work on deep wrecks. But before we turn you loose on that, we're gonna take a quick break and uh, hear from our sponsors oh, of wait, our seminar right series. Saltwater Sports and <laughs> Seminar Series, we'll be right back after this commercial break. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Pen, let the battle begin. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fish mapping, and entertainment for anglers. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. Angle, portable fridge freezers, and high-performance coolers. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. We're back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. And we're in a bottom fishing session and we're gonna discuss a rig that was traditionally designed for one specific species. It affectionately is called the Miami Mutton Snapper Rig, but this could be used elsewhere for pretty much all types of bottom fishing. And we're gonna talk about where that can be beneficial. Harry, the mutton rig. Let's talk about fishing deep wrecks when you're drifting, or it could be over some of the shallower ones. Why is that a specific rig for muttons? Where's the advantage come from? Well, what, what's great about this particular style rig, George, is number one, it's it's a it's a three-way swivel. I'm using a normally a, a, a regular mono leader, 40-pound uh, test. If you want to use fluoro, you can use fluoro, but I, I still stick with with the 40-pound. My leader, if it's real deep water, like say 100 feet to 200 feet, I'm going to use a 50-foot leader. And what's great about using a long leader, and it's all based on your current, also now is what you'll do is you'll take your bait and you'll pitch it out. Let that bait go all the way out to the back of the boat and then you're gonna slowly drop it down. If you, if you use a short leader and drop it real fast, what it does is it'll just come up and just spin and get wrapped all around your line. And it just defeats the whole purpose of everything. So having that long leader like that, so when it drops, it's gonna be up just like that and the current will keep that bait away. And once you hit the bottom, what I like to do, hit the bottom and I'll turn five or six times and get it up off the bottom. Now this bait is just right three feet off the bottom and it's just staying straight back there. If you've got a nice ballyhoo or a big chunk bait, goggle eye, and that mutton snapper <clears throat> will come up and eat it. And then what I'll do also on this particular rig is I have a loop here. And what I'll do is I'll take this, say the current's really ripping, and I have an eight ounce lead on here. I'll take this eight ounce off, off the loop, and go ahead and grab a 16 ounce and put the 16 uh, ounce. It's a quick change weight system Quick on change it. system, and it works phenomenal. You just loop it right back on, and you're ready to keep fishing. So. So if your first drop, you don't make it to the bottom, change to the heavier lead and you're, you're good to go. Now I wanna talk about the reason for the long leaders. So people who don't mutton fish are thinking, as did he say 40 feet? And sometimes these go up to 60 some feet. Oh yeah. And what the advantage is, is when the muttons become very picky, 
They're not feeding aggressively. They'll move, they'll oh, yeah. nudge a bait, they'll shove it out of their way, and they'll toy with it. And if they feel anything unnatural, like you've had a very short leader, and they push it, and they feel resistance, they're gone. Yeah, well, but there's so much slack that a mutt will peck and move, and if it doesn't feel anything unnatural, it's gonna eat it. And that's the advantage of that long leader. And I've actually seen that happen with you fishing in the Bahamas one year, and we were fishing a, a good mutton area in the good mutton spawn, and I was watching in the water how the muttons would come up and grab the whole ballyhoo and actually swim with it and actually gnaw at it a little bit, and you're like, holy cow, and he's actually swimming with it, and then he'll inhale it. But it's, it's so true that you, you just don't jerk, and that's what's good about with this type of fishing is using a circle hook, not necessarily a J hook, which I have here, but having a loop on the end of it also so that hook can turn and get into the, the corner of the mouth of the fish. Right, this and if the bites hook. are hard and coming, I, I drop down a 30 pound fluoro leader and I'm using a, a three out to four out VMC inline circle yeah, hook on it. This is the VMC 60 that I use. I like a wider gap, a bigger hook, because I, I just when they're down that deep, I just, I want to snag them, I don't care, I want to catch them one way or another. Broaden the aspects. You could use that same rig for groupers. It's farther yeah. up north that you get for other species of fish or into the Gulf. When things get tough, even scaling down for smaller fish like, like mango snapper, a long leader system could trick them. Definitely, and if you are fishing shallower water, you don't have to use a 50 foot. You can use a 20 foot leader, but still get that lead down and away from everything and there's, they're not that, that gun That's one of the things we do in the lower keys in Key West and, and it's applicable to anywhere you fish is Look at your situation, look at your current situation, look at your clarity, water clarity situation, and then size your tackle accordingly. And that rig that Harry just showed will work for anything. And you don't have to have the 50 foot, especially if the, if the fish are aggressive and all that, you, you can get away with a much, a much shorter leader. And a lot of times when we're fishing up in the Gulf or in anywhere we're fishing, we'll go back to the old I was gonna bait you on that one. That that knocker rig is taking more bottom fish. It's the best, easiest rig you it can is. use out there. That's <laughs> the easiest it rig. Works like a champ. And uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, we should mention you have to have a circle hook when you're bottom fishing. An inline circle hook. Inline not circle set. hook, a venting tool, and a D hooker. So now you've got this this knocker rig and you can use that. And then if you're drifting, you can just adjust the, the weight so it's up here, plug it with a toothpick or wrap the leader around it a couple times, and now you have a drift rig that keeps the bait up here. So very versatile, the sinker and the hook combination for bottom fish. And that could be dropped rapidly to the bottom too. And if you're drifting over a wreck and you see fish and you want to start to hit these corners or just above it, it's a, it's a fast rig on that. And speaking of fast, we're gonna take a fast commercial break and then come back to get into more detail on our bottom fishing panel. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series bottom fishing segment. We hope you're enjoying the program. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Suffix, always use the best line. VMC, your expert in hooks. Williamson Lures, for the Pelagic Playground. Starbright, blending technology with performance since 1973. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. Welcome back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. We're dealing with bottom fish, very intriguing conversation going. Mark, we talk about the knocker rig itself, a very simple, effective technique that could catch everything from mangroves on up to groupers. But what happens when you're marking fish? Maybe the current's just not right and you're trying to eke out a few more strikes. What are you doing, a uh, terminal rig wise, to try to earn an extra bite or two? You get a downsize, number one. Give me an example. You know, so that the knocker rig that we just talked about is that's a four aught, you know, VMC four aught inline circle hook. This is an ounce and a half uh, weight. So you're gonna go, and that's a point that we haven't made yet. But is for any bottom fishing that I've ever done, I try to get to the bottom with the least amount of weight possible. If you can hold, and if you if you can. If you have the feel and you should try to develop the touch where you hit that thing hits the bottom, then it kind of comes off the bottom and you, you drop back again. And you can get a nice drift out of that and, and hit several different areas of that area, that, that bottom that you're fishing. But so if the bite becomes picky, 
So you might have to downsize the weight. You might have to go. So if this is this, like Diego was saying, 50, I like 50 or 60, you might want to go to 40 pound fluorocarbon. You might go to 30 pound fluorocarbon, you know, and then, and then downsize the hook. You might want to go to a two out or three out hook, downsize the weight. The other things that we do to uh, try to get bites, you've got various styles of jigs and you can take those jigs and again, try to get to the bottom with the, the lightest jig you can possibly get. And obviously tipping those with bait. You can tip those with bait. Now again, if you're fishing in the Gulf of Mexico and you circle tip these hooks. with bait, they gotta have circle hooks. Absolutely. So just to make sure, everybody should be clear on that. And these are just some of the different, you know, beanie jig, upperman style, and then you've got the arrowhead jig, and you, you can use all of these with or without the bucktail, the nylon, you know, the nylon skirt, what, you know, however. Diego, you're holding some jig packs too. You know, it's, it's funny because I follow, I follow Mark's track. I learned a lot from Mark, by the way. He's a little bit older than me. Thank you. <laughs> He's but a lot older than me, too. <laughs> <laughs> and we only live two miles from each other, so. <laughs> the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. Stay cool and protected while fishing. Calcutta Outdoors. Hard-working outdoor gear. JL Audio, ahead of the curve. ACR, building survival products since 1956. Florida Keys and Key West. Visit flakeys.com. George will be right back. Welcome back to the final installment of the 34th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. But, um, you know, following up on, on what Mark was saying, you know, these jig heads, you get them from quarter ounce, um, to eighth of an ounce or half an ounce, so you could adjust your. You know, if you're fishing with, if you're fishing with um, live pilchards, you could adjust ac according to your current, your weight. So they work. They're magical. And, and, and like you said, you, you could live bait put strips behind them too, and it's just a fast way that you could get on some good action. You can free line them for yellow tails and stuff like that, which is awesome. They work really great. And then again, you could adjust them according to your to your current. Like Mark was saying, if the current's slow, you know you want the lightest presentation possible. And it's funny, because Mark mentioned it, you want to get that touch, that finesse. And I guess that's the difference between angling and just fishing. Once you get into that finesse, that angling, and, and the and right presentation, It's a very important it. point. I'm going to grill you on this one, too, because that's so super crucial. You've got a bait down in the bottom. Okay. Tell me about the subtleties, the finesse. Are you trying to keep in touch with your sinker? Do you keep just enough tension in line to feel the sinker, or do you keep it slack? Do you feel the sinker rolling? Talk about the finesse of being in touch with that bait at all times. My, my idea is to chum those, those fish up and get them coming up, whether it's a grouper. We filmed the show together, yep. and the grouper, the black grouper, you came up. Beautiful grouper. Blue, it came up 15 feet up. We were fishing 55 feet of water. So I try to time it and, 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 and weight it perfectly where you where Sometimes I don't even feel the, the, the bait getting to the bottom. You know, you, they'll hit it before it gets to the bottom. But otherwise, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll move it a little bit because they like that action, whether, whether it's a live bait or a dead bait. I like to move it on the, on the bottom and feel, feel the ocean, you know, the, the bottom of the, of the, of the surface, and, and then you usually get a hit. Yeah, and talk about hits. A good friend of mine, you've seen him in the show, we all know him, Carl Grassy. We uh, had done a bottom fishing show you know, together. We bottom fish a lot. And we're at one trip, we're dropping down live baits, you know, cut baits the whole bit, and we're really doing well, and it get a little bit low in the action, so he takes out a Williamson flutter jig and sends it down. I'm thinking, what are you doing? We got the best little live baits, and he starts cranking bottom fish, and he said sometimes it takes those flutter jigs and the action to wake everything up. A reaction And deal. a totally different deal, yeah. a reaction strike. Harry, you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, everything's just floating around back there, and fish are, you know, you've seen the snappers all milling around, and all, all of a sudden something now is down there doing all kinds of, and those flutter jigs, they hit the bottom, they throw up a little bit of sand, and they do all kinds of commotion, and it, those fish will just come out and they, they got to grab it. I don't know if they're hungry for it or, or they're just attacking it, but it just, you get a lot of fish with Especially those Especially the mutton snapper. Mutton oh, snapper love that. It's crazy how, how that has gone just out of control with this, just fake, keeping it on the bottom. Don't bring it up 20 feet or anything like that. Keep everything on the bottom. Just let it just bounce on the bottom, and, and it's phenomenal fishing. No, it is. Mark, you're going to say something The other thing we got to hit on real quick is that even though we're bottom fishing, and say we might be in 50 or 60 foot of water, I'm putting out block chum on the surface. And then I'm also chunking and what, whatever type of bait that we're using, whether we're using ballyhoo or, you know, pilchards or whatever. So you've got your, you've got your block chum on the surface. That's helping to bring them up. 
And then like Diego was talking about, you want, you know, trying to get them up off the bottom and then you're chunking and dropping those chunks down. And that's where you can start drifting and putting very small weights on or no weight at all. And we, you know, you and I fished one time, caught a lot of muttons doing that on the north side of the Marquesas. Okay, we've got about maybe 20 seconds left. Real fast, I want to talk about the pound test braid that you would use for bottom fishing unless you're using mono. Mark. I usually use 50 pound braid and a pen 650. They're uh, Spin Fisher 6. The 6500. Uh, Harry. Old school, still using 40 pounds, 40 pound mono. Man, all the way through, that's amazing. Diego. I went from mono to, uh, to braid. I'm with you too, Eight, Suffolk 832 braid, 30 pound test out there for the muttons and uh, you know, and trying I, to scale as light to as possible. The, you know, real quick with the yep. braid, you know, use a little bit, you, you still need some stretch with that, even though with the bottom fishing. So I'm using like 10 to 12 foot of 50 pound mono or floral As, leader. It all makes a full circle in this discussion back to the super long mono leader. And we are out of time for the bottom panel. I appreciate the expertise. Diego Toyran, Harry Vernon III, Captain Mark Schmidt. I hope you enjoyed that panel. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. We'll be back next time with a totally different session. We'll see you then. Well, there you have it, this week's Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Now, adhering to Saltwater Sportsman Seminar Series tradition, you still have chances to win door price drawings. Simply go to nationalseminarseries.com, log on to the door price page, just give us your name, phone number, and an email address, and at the conclusion of the airing of the series in December, we will draw for a number of excellent door prizes. Get right to it. We'll see you on the next episode of the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series.